friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Erin, this is Erin Go Live, and maybe we'll call this Erin Go Sober. I am currently eight days sober. I have my first chip. This is a 24 hour chip. I think, I don't think you get another one until, until 30 days, but I made a video in September where I was announcing I was doing Sober September and uh, I had recognized that my drinking had gotten out of control. It was mostly social at that point. I just was being very social uh, quite frequently. It was a very social summer. And then, so there'd be usually multiple social occasions during the week. My tolerance was getting up there, therefore I was drinking more um, each of those social events. And then I would drink some uh, on my own during the week as well. I did sober September and although I struggled the first week, week and a half, what I didn't realize, so I thought that, so I thought that withdrawal symptoms were like the shakes. And when you see like on TV or movies, like really serious, uh, people who are very physically dependent on alcohol, uh, having like serious kind of medical type of withdrawal symptoms. And I wasn't consuming nearly that much alcohol for that to be the case. Um, but I did have um, really bad anxiety and the just feeling of kind of being um, like not comfortable in my skin and I just didn't know what to do with myself. And I was like feeling emotions and that made me uncomfortable. And those are actually withdrawal symptoms. And once I kind of got over that, you know, I had made this conviction that I wasn't going to drink in September. I had shared that with people. I went to my book club, for example, and I was like, yeah, I'm doing sober September. Kind of got out of hand. I need, I need kind of a, a more of a behavioral reset than anything. And uh, it wasn't a problem. Even by the, by the end of the month, I even forgot that it was the end of the month. I really didn't realize, you know, it's September 29th, you know, and I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's, I can drink in like a couple days. And then I didn't even drink on October 1st. Um, I didn't go on a bender or anything like that. Uh, I made it, I don't know, it was the second or third. I had some sort of event come up and, and I drank at that event. And I was able to kind of keep things under wraps for a while. And I had gone, kind of gone back to this old rule that I'd had that I don't keep a beer or seltzer, hard seltzer in the house, because if those are here, I'm pretty much gonna drink them. Uh, so, I went back to my old rule where if I want to drink, uh, then I go out. Um, so I go, I have my, you may have seen me, you know, vlog about, talk about my local watering hole. I'd go over there and, um, and grab a couple beers and some dinner and bring my book there and, uh, or it was social events. Um, and then it started to turn into, um, let me just crack open a bottle of wine and somehow, you know, wine felt like a little bit more, acceptable, I guess, to have in the evening. And, uh, you know, it'd be one or two glasses of wine. And once you, once you open up a bottle of wine, like you have to drink it relatively quickly, right? So that means that like, you know, maybe one, two, three days in a row, I was having, you know, glass, glass and a half or two glasses of wine um, by myself, of course. So it's kind of snowballed since then and has gotten to a point now that, and we're not working right now. And I'm doing a lot of manual labor, getting my house ready to sell. And I've been drinking even more. So the social events are still happening and drinking at home, like during the day while I'm doing manual labor, it's like, okay, I'm doing hot, sticky, you know, packing work, moving furniture, that kind of thing. And so I'm gonna have a cold seltzer, you know, multiple cold seltzers during the day. And uh, it's kind of gotten out of hand. And uh, one of the big things that's like evidence of it being a problem is uh, how high my tolerance is. Like I can go out with my, with my girlfriends and we can drink, you know, we can both have two glasses of wine and she's feeling it and I'm like ready for glass number three and not a problem. And it's kind of like, you know how a fish will kind of grow based on the size of the container that it's in. I will drink based on the amount of time that basically we have. And I'll get disappointed when the people around me kind of stop drinking for the night. 
And it's like, oh man, are we done? Like, I don't want to be the only one that like keeps drinking, you know? So, um, it's like, all right, I guess I'm, I guess I'm done drinking. I really want more. Um, but I don't want to be the only one that continues on alone. So I started therapy, got, got back into therapy, um, about a week ago. Um, it was last Thursday. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, May, May 2nd, um, got back into therapy after being out for a year and it was a new therapist. So she's getting to know me. She's doing my intake and we get around to the, how much alcohol do you drink? And she basically is like, you're abusing alcohol because I was drinking five to seven days a week and you know, one to three or four drinks each, each time. And that's a lot. And she's like, you're abusing alcohol. Um, I want you to start going to meetings. And it also, during that same call, so my psychiatrist, my, my previous ther therapist, and then my, my psychiatrist is, uh, they're in the same practice. And so she's able to see the notes from everybody. And what I thought was a diagnosis of cyclothymia, which is like a lower level um, version of bipolar, is actually a bipolar two diagnosis. And it kind of had start about, started as like, is it cyclothymia? And it kind of transitioned into, no, it's, it's full bipolar two. And when I got my new psychiatrist a while back, because the initial one moved away, he'd been treating me for it. And, and I knew he was treating me with bipolar meds, but he hadn't like made the like proclamation of like, okay, by the way, you have bipolar two. So two of these like bombshells hit me on Thursday and I just went into a tailspin. I called or I, I texted my friend like right away. We get off the phone, this is a nine o'clock phone call. We get off the phone at like 9.45, 9.50. And my first thought is, I need a drink. And instead I texted my friend and I tell her just like bullet points. This is what just happened. She's like, call me. So we talk on the phone and I am crying. I did not know what to do with myself. I felt so unsettled. It was like the most bipolar day I've ever had. I like couldn't stop crying, but I also was like manicky and couldn't like figure out what to do with myself. Tried to read. I was like, okay, I just need to read something like nice and cozy and happy and like go do one of the things I love to do that's not drinking. Took my beach chair over to the park, sat in the shade with the cold water and uh, I was gonna read Funny Story by Emily Henry. I read that first page, I don't know how many times, couldn't get past the first page because I couldn't process it. And then I just sat there in the park and I text my friend and I'm like, I don't even know what to do. I'm literally sitting in the park, not reading right now. She's like, come meet me at the office. Long story short, I end up, long story long, I end up talking to her three times that day, twice, in, twice on the phone, once in person. And she had told me, I was scared. I was very scared about going to a meeting and she's, I'll go to a meeting with you. So we went to a meeting on Saturday morning and it was really, really scary. Um, but I made it through. I was so glad, so grateful that I had her there with me. And um, I went to a second meeting on Monday. I went to a women's group alone and that's where they gave me the 24 hour chip. And it's now day eight. I'm eight days sober and I've only really thought about alcohol once today. It's alarming. I've got a lot of stressful things happening in my life, two like major transitions. <laughs> my mom sa said, you picked a bad time to start drinking, stop drinking. Um, and there's a lot of times when, you know, this like the stressful scenario will come up and my first thought is I need a drink. And that, and that part's scary. Also, my mom's been worried about me, my particularly also because I'm on psych meds. Um, my sister very worried about me. I, I talked to my, sorry, my dog's whining. I talked to my sister about it um, over the weekend. And she's like, honestly, if it wasn't for you, like the stress of the house move going on right now, um, I was gonna confront you. Or I was gonna confront you like after the house stuff settles down. So all that to say, um, 
I, I, I am not ready to kind of um, claim a title, um, a label in regards to alcohol. Um, I recognize that I have a problem and I've been abusing alcohol. And right now I plan to be sober. What I hope, and I, I, I don't know yet, obviously, if this is going to be a doable thing, what I hope is that I kind of give myself a bit of a reset, continue going to meetings, continue using resources and, and, and talking to people. Um, I have a couple of friends um, who are in the program, have been sober for a long time. One's taking me to meet, meeting tomorrow. I went to, I'm going to another meeting with somebody else um, on, uh, on Sunday. And I have a book trip, like a girls book club trip at the end of June. And it's gonna be a few days, we've got an Airbnb, we're gonna do a book club meeting, we're just gonna like hang out and read and do whatever. And I wanna be able to drink during that. You know, we're big like wine people. And so it's, it's one day at a time, so maybe by the time I get there, I won't wanna drink. Um, or I will realize that it's not okay for me to drink or, or, or whatever. I'm not sure. But in my head, rather than thinking of like, I'm never going to drink again, I'm kind of putting this benchmark of like, okay, got to get to the end of June. And then, you know, I'm going to try this out and, and see how it goes. And when I drink, I don't drink to get drunk too. So it's, I'm not planning, I'm not planning this as like a bender. Um, when it happens, I just want to be, I'm, I'm hopeful that I can get to a point where I can drink socially, comfortably, safely, and stay within the boundaries that I set for myself. It's possible that I'm being naive and that's not going to be, I'm not going to be able to do that, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. So as always, when something comes up for me, what do I do? I get a book about it, right? So this is the naked mind. Control Alcohol, Find Freedom, Discover Happiness, and Change Your Life by Annie Grace. And this is really looking at the psychological and neuro, neurological components of, um, of alcohol, um, the, the cultural, social, and industry factors that support alcohol dependence in all of us, um, and really kind of looking at the stigma of alcohol and alcohol abuse and kind of a little bit different of a perspective than the tri than the traditional kind of like AA format. Okay, so that's that's this book. Also, I really like this cover. It's just like, I, I love the blue and the green together. Um, yeah, so that's really nice. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a nice book. This cover is super cute, but I hate a solid white page book. Just my eyeballs do not like that. And it's hard for me to read these books, but this is a really cute, cover, I think. Um, this is It Began with Huntley Drinkley, A Journey Through Alcoholism and Bipolar Disorder by Janie Becker. And what this is, it's it's a memoir. And Janie Becker's family used to watch uh, NBC News with Chet Huntley and David Brinkley every evening. And they, uh, they let their daughter, starting about 12 years old, join in cocktail hour while watching the show. And they called it Huntley Drinkley. And so that's where just this daily intake of alcohol uh, started for her. And so I'm just really interested to look into this bipolar and alcoholism or addiction in general is commonly paired together. And so basically I want to read this for support, for information, for um, almost like a sense of camaraderie, I suppose. Um, just like having, having, having somebody else kind of saying, talking about the scenario or the, or the circumstance that I find myself in. So I will be reading through those books and, you know, maybe I'll do like a vlog, um, of the experience of reading those books and the experience of what I'm doing, how things are going. Um, over some period of time. I'm not sure what that is, but, um, yeah, I also, I also want to shout out, um, there's a, a, a subscriber, a booktube friend of mine. I'm not going to say her name, but, um, there's a lot going on in my life right now. 
besides the alcohol, selling my house, I am very seriously, like very, very seriously, like not, like 99% sure I'm going to be pursuing a master's degree in a master's of divinity to become a chaplain. And I reached out to this booktube friend and, um, and just asked her like, hey, I need some counsel. Would you be willing to have a phone call with me? And uh, she was on the phone from with me, I don't know, 45 minutes and I'm crying on the phone and she was just there for me. She listened, she offered really great uh, support and counsel. So you know who you are, thank you. I so, so appreciate you. And I really appreciate this community. If you made it to the end of this video, uh, thank you. Thank you for your support and even just watching this. And um, I don't know, give me like a heart emoji <laughs> just to, you know, give me a little, give me a little boost. Thank you for watching. Remember, every day is a great day for a great day, no matter what.